Okay, I'm back. I've got my slats. You can see at the end of the table, I've got three little stacks. Um, they're face down so that uh, those are the pieces that I want to face forward and that's the side I want to put the bevel on. I set up a little fence. I've got my chamfer bit on there, which is basically, it looks like a V-groove bit, but I've got my fence set up so that I'm only cutting half of it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run a few just to show you. You're not gonna be able to hear anything because, it, well, you'll hear a lot. It's going to be basically uh, the router, which makes a racket. But this is my fence that I've got set up. And you'll notice that I've got an aluminum piece in the back. That's another fence that I have uh, for different setups so that uh, I can uh, really do production work very quickly and very easily without having to, uh, you know, do a heck of a lot of work. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put on my dust mask and uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and run a few of these. And let me get this up close so you can see what I'm doing. And that should do it. And I'm going to go ahead now and fire this up and show you what I do. So I ran that little stack just to show you how I do it and what I you notice that one of them gave me a little bit of a chip out and I mentioned earlier that the reason that I run with the direction of the blade and then against the direction of the blade was to help prevent chip out and even still I had one of these pieces that created a little chip out and it was this guy but it's okay because I'm going to make sure that this guy ends up into the dado that they forms the frame. So you'll never see that. It'll be buried three eighths of an inch deep into the door frame. So one or two, uh, I don't mind. If there was any more, I'd have to pull up another slat and I have extra slats, so it's not the end of the world. But uh, anyway, that's how I go about doing my chamfer on the edge. You can control the width of your chamfer, of course. Uh, this is a pretty big chamfer, but I like the look. You can reduce the uh, amount of the, of the chamfer to have a smaller V-groove, um, however you want to set up your, your router bit. But uh, I have a, a router set up so that it comes through, uh, the blade comes through the top of my table to allow me to do almost anything I want to without holding the router. You can imagine how difficult it would have been for me to run this when I'm using my router. I, would, I wouldn't have been able to do the whole process and because they're so thin I couldn't have used a bearing bit. This is really the only way you can do this but it is really easy. You saw how quick it is. Okay and uh, I'll go ahead and router the rest of these and these have been sanded uh, the first sanding step. My finished sanding step is going to be 220 and I don't 
install these on the door until after they're sanded and ready for finishing so that I don't have to try and sand while it's inside the door frame. Okay, I'm ready to uh, assemble one of these doors and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and show you the whole process. It's, it's pretty quick, pretty easy, not too, not too tough. I'm gonna pull my spline out. I'm going to throw glue into my joint on both sides to make sure that that biscuit that I make is nicely glued and seated. Let's do the other side. Put the other one in. And now I do the top. I hope you're seeing this okay. Make sure I don't have any, any glue on my hands. I want to transfer that into my piece. Okay, so. And those are ready. So now what I do is I turn around and I glue up these pieces, getting ready for the assembly. Turn around and I put glue on my pe on my biscuit and get ready for there. And I put glue on this biscuit, getting ready for here. Okay, that's done. And I do my other side. skimp on the glue, any excess that comes out you can wipe off. You want to make sure this is a nice strong joint. Okay, so go ahead and I throw one end together. Now I'm going to t end up tapping this into place um, when it's all said and done so it doesn't have to be absolutely where it belongs right now. It's going to move a little bit when I start inserting the slats anyway. So, this out of the way, and I've got my slats set up the way I want them installed in the frame. I've already decided how I want to do that. So I spread that out a little bit so that it goes in okay. I don't want to spread it out too far because then they'll fall out and you've got to pull them out and start all over again. And of course you've got this glued up so you don't have all the time in the world. all of the slats with 220 paper, but I've also sanded the, the, the bevels, so those are nice and sanded as well. Tapping it in place anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Now, what I like to do is I like to keep the end of the door available so that when I go to check for square, I have I can measure diagonally to make sure that this is a nice square piece. So that's why I don't run the clamp out to the very end. Now what I'll do is I just take a piece of wood. In this case, I've got a sanding block. Let me get the one with the smoother paper on it. I'll get my hammer. And I will tap that flush. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
Beautiful. And this end. Beautiful. And if anything has moved, just tap it back into place. Okay, so clamp it down. Remember to give yourself some room at the end so that you can measure diagonally, make sure it's square. This guy can go on. Excess glue. So it's out of square about a 32nd of an inch in this direction. So I'm going to put a clamp and I'm going to pull that in and get it nice and square. Now, what I like to do is get a couple of blocks to raise this up. Now, what you can also do, too, is you can run your square in there to see how good you've done, how close you've come. And that is dead on. And that is pretty darn good. I can't argue with that. That is... <laughs> that's right there so basically I just wait for it to dry up and that'll give you an idea of how I go ahead and make these doors with the slats now the only thing I have left to do keep in mind every, the entire interior of the door frame has been sanded including the interior flat area of the door frame so it's ready for finishing the only thing I have to do now is sand the top and then the back side of the door and it's ready to accept then the trim piece. The trim piece is going to be pre-sanded and ready for assembly, and the door is going to be pre-sanded and ready for the trim. So after the trim is installed, all I have to do then is uh, drill the holes for the, for the hinges and finish the piece. Okay, the door I just assembled is glued up, it's dry, it's ready to be worked on. And I wanted to show you that the back side is basically flat. Now, if you have any of your slats that are, are that have a little bit of a bow in them, if you want to, you can do what I do and have an extra slat laying around that you can use as a stiffener to straighten them out. So anyway, I'll probably end up going ahead and putting a stiffener on here because there is one or two slats that are not cooperating, but. That's par for the course when you do this style of door because you've only got a quarter of an inch of material and if there's a little bit of a bow in it, it's going to do what it wants to do. But now the next process after I get um, all of the doors assembled, all three of them, uh, is to put the trim on and that will be the next process that I'm going to do. 
Okay, I've got three sides on. I wanted to show you how I put the last piece on because, of course, it's not so easy to determine the length that you need. Measuring it is one way, but if you're off by a little bit and you cut it too short, you'll be glad that you cut some extra trim pieces so that you don't have to worry about making more. So here's what I do. I go ahead and I miter one end. This end is mitered. And I go ahead and I line that up facing the other direction with my finger at the very tip of the piece. Now what I do is I come in here and I make a line. Now that line becomes the outside edge or the long edge of the mitered piece. So now I want my miter to go in this direction and that's my line telling me that it's going to be within a 64th of an inch of fitting and if I have to take a 64th off and go back and cut it again, I don't mind. That's okay. So I'll go ahead and cut this and I'll go ahead and fit it and show you. I went ahead and cut it and sure enough I was about a 64th of an inch long and I went back and I trimmed that 64th down a little bit and now it's a perfect fit. Now it's really nice to do it that way because you'll never end up having it too short. You'll always have it ever so slightly long if you do that. So anyway, that's the little trick I use to go ahead and know how long to cut these pieces. And now this piece will fit in there. I'll nail, I'll nail and glue that home. I'm going to be running the drawer faces uh, through my table saw to get them to the width that I want. They're not cut to the length that I want. I, I'll clean those up after. Um, but I wanted to show you a, a little uh, trick that you can do. If you notice, these are two drawer faces, and what I did was I ended up taking the three drawer faces out of the same piece of wood. And if you wanted to get really fancy and your drawers were going to be side by side by side, you could actually turn around and match the cathedral so that the board is actually continuing throughout the whole all the drawers that you're doing. You can see what I'm talking about here. This is a continuation of this piece. So uh, if I wanted to, I could turn around and have this the end drawer and this the drawer beside it, and then the next one, and on and on and on, depending on how many drawers you're going to have side by side. But it just depends on, uh, you know, you've got to plan this ahead. You've got to make sure that you label them or mark them some way so that you know where they're going to end up in the scheme of things if your drawers are ever so slightly different. Now, one of the things that I wanted to mention, when you're making this style of door or in drawers, what you want to make sure of is that you calculate for the thickness of the trim piece that you're going to put around it. For instance, I'm going to be trimming it out top, bottom, and both sides. So you have to calculate that in ripping your, your finished size of your door, of your drawer, to make sure that you've calculated in for the additional half inch that you're going to add to it. So when you use your drawer guides and you're fitting it into the hole, uh, especially when you're doing an inset drawer and not one that's going to hit the face frame. If you're hitting the face frame, it's, you know, if it's a quarter of an inch on either side larger than it normally would be, not a problem. But in my case, I'm making inset doors, so I have to calculate all of this so that when the door, when the drawer is done and the doors are done, I end up with about a sixteenth of an inch reveal all the way around. So it takes a little more work to calculate all of this out and to make sure that all of your process comes out the way you want it to, but I just wanted to show you the little thing about uh, cutting your drawers out of the same piece of wood so that your grain can continue if you want that look. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, turn on the vacuum system, run the three drawer faces through to the width that I need, and I'll go ahead and I'll do that now. finished size of these drawer faces I need to be 16 inches long. My opening is 16 and 5 8 inches long. 
but because I'm going to add a half an inch in trim with these two pieces, now I've got 16 and a half, and I will then have a half of an, an eighth of an inch to play with, which means that I'll end up with a sixteenth of an inch on either side of my, my face frame before the drawer. So it's a nice tight fit and it looks really good and you don't see a huge gap all the way around. But again, doing it this way, you have to calculate a little bit more than if you were doing a drawer that sits on top of the face frame. Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and uh, cross cut this to length. And you'll notice I set up my little stop. It's because now I don't have to measure the second one and I know they're both going to be identical in length without having to measure and lining up my cut and everything else. So even though I'm only cutting two pieces, that's so quick to do that uh, I, it's just what I do. I've got a little setup here to show you what's going on. And so what I do is I run a scrap piece through so that I can check my depth, which is three eighths of an inch deep, and the distance between the edge of the board and the start of my dado, which is a quarter of an inch. Once I know that that's worked out okay, then I can go ahead and set up the positive stops where I run my drawer face through, and you'll see that in a few minutes. I've got my setup for my drawer sides. And what I want is basically 23 and a quarter inches long on my drawer sides. So I've set up a stop. You can see the little rabbit at the bottom. That's so that if the, any sawdust comes into play, it, it won't hit up against the board and cause me to cut following ones a little shorter. So that's what I do. I screwed that down and I'm ready to cut. I need six drawer sides. Okay, to plow out the uh, dado for the drawer sides to fit into the drawer face, you have to determine where the cutting starts and the cutting stops in relationship, in relationship to your fence so that you can set up a stop. So what I do is I take my square and I carefully run it up to the edge of my router bit and I make a mark on my fence using my mechanical pencil so that it's a nice sharp line. And I do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I know exactly where my blade is going to start cutting and stop cutting. And so now I can go ahead and do the setup and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, I, what I did was I set this up so that I have from the back side of my line, in other words, where the cutting is going to stop, to my, to my positive stop, exactly the width of my drawer side. In this case, it's five inches. So from the stop to the back side of the router bit is five inches. And so when I plow this out, my drawer side will fit. It'll come right to the bottom of my drawer face. And <clears throat> that's how I've done it. So I'm going to go ahead and run these three drawers and show you basically um, what I do. One other little tidbit of information. You'll notice that my positive stop is up off the fence. I don't raise it up just a quarter of an inch because there's going to be so much material plowed out of that, to, out of that router bit that a quarter of an inch is not going to do it. I need it even higher than that. And sometimes it, the sawdust, the uh, granules will pile up and I'll have to clean it out and finish my cut. Hopefully I won't have to do that. So that's why you'll notice I've got that stop raised up about a half an inch off the table. I mean about the sun. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run the other side of the dados for the drawers. And this side is not much fun. And the reason is because I've got to make a plunge cut. And to do that, it's really nice if you have a plunge cutting router bit, which basically allows you to cut as you go. In other words, as I drop the board onto the blade, it'll start cutting. Unfortunately, Baltic birch is a little bit narrower than the half inch that uh, it used to be. Now they've dropped it in thickness ever so slightly. The problem is, is that I can buy a router bit that thickness, but I can't buy one with a plunge bit. So what I have to do is I have to muscle the board onto the bit and then run it. Once you've got it plunged, the rest is a piece of cake, but the plunge part of it is no fun and you'll see that process now. the most difficult part of the whole process uh, is plunging a dado when you don't have a plunge cutting bit but unfortunately that's what I have to deal with the outcome though is great uh, you get really good at it after you've done a few drawers um, the other side is a piece of cake because you're plowing forward you're not having to do a plunge bit a plunge cut but anyway they're done and you can see that's what I've got and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get set up for the next process. I've got my router table set up to groove the bottom uh, of the drawer face to accept the drawer bottom. And all I did was make a little mark on the table uh, where the center of the dado would be that I cut earlier for the drawer sides. So I can drop it down in, the, in that hollow, run it, and then stop at my second mark and actually really don't need the second mark because you can hear the pitch of the blade change when you hit the other end of the dado uh, for the other drawer side and I'm going to go ahead and run that now and show you basically how it's set up and how easy it is now keep in mind I'm not going to run the drawer bottoms or the excuse me the drawer sides uh, using the same process it's much easier to do on the table saw Okay, so I've got my dust mask on, and let me throw in the earplugs. And here we go. And that's basically how easy it is to uh, run your drawer bottoms on the face of your drawer. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and run the drawer sides and the back through the table saw to accept the drawer bottom. Okay, I'm ready to assemble the drawers. Um, I wanted to point out, make sure that you sand the inside back of the drawer face ready for finishing because after it's assembled it makes it really difficult. Probably don't have to tell you that. And I already started assembling the drawer before I forgot to, and I forgot to turn on the camera. So I've already inserted a little glue in there, but I'm going to go ahead and finish gluing it up. Um, this is what I do. I put a bead of glue on the inside wall of the dado. That coats the inside wall, and when I insert the drawer aside, it's going to push that glue along the side and down to the bottom, so I'll get a nice tight joint and glue everywhere so that I make sure that when this drawer is dry, it's solid. Now I insert the back, I mean the bottom. One of the things I wanted to point out is you notice how curled that is. It's just the, it's just the nature of the beast. You're, you end up fighting with it to get it into the drawer face, but it's not terrible. It's just a little bit of a fight. 
I, it usually pops in place. So you see I've got it home, but I've got to pop it down. Okay, so now what I do is I glue up the ends of the drawer back. And then the, I found that the easiest way to glue this up, and it is, it is pretty quick, is to insert the back. And again, I'm fighting with that, the curvature of the back. Okay, I think I got it. There we go. Okay, so now I'll bring that back in. Come on, fellas, cooperate with me. Okay, so I found that the easiest way to glue the back up, the, uh, the back of the drawer, is to go ahead and to push down on it on both the back and the side at the same time so that it's sitting nice and tight on the table so that I make sure that the bottom of the drawer is flush. Sorry I'm in the way of the camera, but you'll see when I do the other side. Okay, so what I do is I push down on both the bottom and the, I mean the uh, drawer back and the side at the same time, giving it a lot of force so that I make sure it's sitting flat on my table. Nice. And I threw one in the middle. Now what I do is I stand the drawer up and I check for square. Because the drawers have to be square for everything that works right. To, for everything to work right. And that is almost perfect. Move it back ever so slightly. Perfect. The other side should be as well, and it is. Okay, so now what I do is I turn around and I put in the nails, put everything in the nails so that this locks everything in place and I carefully push down as I do this. You're never going to see these nails buried into the drawer face a little over a half an inch. dead on. So that's how I put the drawers and now it's just a matter of putting it aside and letting it dry and then move on to the next step. I have sanded the drawer faces and I'm ready to go ahead and assemble the trim around the drawer. It's basically the same process as doing the door and you can see that I've got the, a finished door sitting beside it so you can get an idea of what the trim looks like when it's on the door. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead now, and you'll notice what I did was I mitered one end, and then I laid it down on, underneath the drawer, and I marked the other end, and then went over and mitered it, and that starts the process all the way around the drawer. I've got three to do, and I won't bother you with, you know, assembling the trim pieces. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the next step is going to be finishing, and that's where I think you're really going to enjoy seeing the process that I do because it's very simple but if you're going to do a beautiful piece and you want to keep it nice I'm going to show you the finish to put on it.